Hello, my name's Jason Corsine, 2 Echo 1 Hotel Kilowaska, based in the central part of England in a city called Leicester. And I just want to go through, I've been building a, um, <clears throat> or let's say I've been adapting my um, drive over mass support to allow me to uh, fit my body pole. And um, obviously I had to 3D print some parts to do that. So uh, I hope this uh, little video will give you some insight into my, um, my, uh, little project. Just a, an update on my drive over mass support and that I wanted to configure utilizing this um, for my uh, body pole. Um, what I've actually done is 3D printed uh, a couple of items to help assist and secure the mast within this uh, large void. So what I've done is uh, I've printed a base part which will slide in there and uh, I've made this collar here which will sit nicely with this ridge on top so like that. So it's quite a nice fit really. So what I'm going to do is take this outside, I'm going to put it in a real world scenario and drive the, the car over it and um, try it with my uh, body pole mast. So I'll come back to you shortly. Right, I've uh, driven over the mast now, so I'll drop in the, uh, oh, no not that way, drop that part down, slide in the collar and here I have body pole mast that seems quite sturdy to me I don't think that's going anywhere what a success however I've also got a fiberglass pole so that I just wanted to try and believe it or not if I took out this top part and uh, slide this over I think I've got a bit of a bonus here this is the fiberglass pole there we go I've actually got <laughs> a fiberglass pole support. This fiberglass pole only cost me um, probably the equivalent to about 10 US dollars but it's more or less the same diameter as the body pole. That's the body pole, that's the fiberglass pole. So that's a bit of a bonus that. Anyway what I'll do is I'll um, show you what programs I used um, and how I actually printed these using uh, free available software off the net. So uh, once again, I'll uh, catch you shortly. What I forgot to mention is I mentioned in my previous video that I was gonna uh, configure my um, body pole uh, in a J-pole configuration for two meters. And uh, I just wanted to just show you um, it actually set up. Uh, obviously I'm not outside, I'm in the shack at the moment, but um, as you can see, I've fitted the Versity. I've put the angle arms on. I've screwed them into place. And uh, I've got two of the telescopic whips. Now, I suppose it doesn't, as long as you can achieve the lengths of um, each element, which I'm actually going to um, let you know, uh, it doesn't matter what you use, uh, whether you use the, uh, the black uh, coated uh, antenna whips or the silver but I think the black ones in their collapsed um, configuration are slightly too long especially for the uh, the ground plane elements of the J-pole so as you can see um, that's going to be the radiating one now this measures all the way um, I can't obviously show you but where you've got that red rubber cap so the measurement goes to the top of that cap down to where it actually goes on the rotating arm. So from the rotating arm, top here, 
all the way up. So the radiating um, element is 43 and uh, three quarters of an inch long. And the, uh, the ground plane side is I think it's 14 14 625 so I'll let you work out that so 14.625 inches so it's only sort of only just a bit of the section out from the uh, the collapsed configuration but this will give you more or less a perfect tune all the way across the two meter band um, but there you go so it's just a uh, next next week I'm um, gonna take this out in the field and uh, give it a whirl so that'll be interesting but uh, I just thought just throw this little bit of the video in before I get on to the the programs I used uh, for um, 3d printing the um, the sleeves and collars for the for the mast itself but uh, anyway I'll uh, head over to the uh, the software I used uh, to um, design the um, the parts Hello, now onto the 3D printing part. As you can see, I've got my two items here that I 3D printed. And um, this was obviously the, the, the top part that sits in the top of the, the, the mass support. You can see some marks there. They're not cracks. Um, it's just where there's a raft or brim that you can use, which um, when it's actually printed, it's printed that way down. And it creates a bit of a raft. Um, to allow adhesion so it doesn't move when it actually prints uh, but it's solid there's probably seven hours of printing in that just that alone um, and then probably three hours there for this but uh, anyway let's cut over to what programs I used right now what I actually used was a program free open source there's two programs you need are Tinkercad, this is what I'm showing you, and Cura, which is the slicing software that allows you to um, set up the uh, temperature of the bed, the PLA, the speed, the print, and um, simply save it and uh, stick. Well, in my case, I save it to a micro SD card and put it into the printer directly. But anyway, we'll get to that. So this is the... Um, the bottom part of my mass support so I've still got it loaded in but say for example just to show you how simple this is you've got all your basic shapes down the right hand side you can make anything from these shapes really to a degree that is um, but it's enough for, for me for little projects little washers brackets mounts so say for example I wanted to uh, put a six mil hole in the center of uh, here I thought about doing it for draining water for example uh, if it starts to rain I didn't want everything just to pull in the bottom there the um, when I've got the mast in but all we do here is we'll pick up this cylinder on the right hand side this translucent one here and I want to put a six mil hole now I can change the dimensions of this cylinder and I want to make it six mil so all I simply do is click on the square there, left click on the mouse button. You can either slide, you can slide in and out to change the dimensions, or you can simply just highlight the, uh, the dimension already there. And I put six, this obviously running in millimeters. And I'll put six millimeters there. Okay. I'm not really too bothered about the height of it because I'm on the bottom of the work plane but I want to put a hole in the center of my bottom piece of my mass support. So all I will simply do is left click, drag and I'll drop it there somewhere. It's not in the middle but it's key we get it in the middle. Now the way to do that is simply left click, highlight, let go and go up here you can see where my mouse is uh, where it says align you simply click align and all we're focusing on all we're interested in is centering it so where you see these dots obviously represent a dimension or a side but we're interested in the 
center. So we simply click on that one. It turns gray when it's aligned, when it's centered, and we click on that one. Okay. So now we've got that center. Now if we merge these or group them, again, left click, highlight, let go, and go on group. We click on group, and there you go. You have your perfectly centered six millimeter hole. Now I suggest you download this and have a play. There's lots you can do. You can merge solid shapes, do cutouts. You can do everything from a basic aspect. It's not really um, an expert sort of CAD system, but it's a good way to learn. So I want to print this now. So I've already downloaded Cura. Again, I, I will put the links in the bottom for the two programs you need. There's this one, Tinkercad, and Cura, the slicing software. So we simply go up to export. I want it to be an STL file. That seems to be the, 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 the format really for 3D printing, or I know it to be. Click that. So I've done that. Now I can open the file now. So I've done a couple previous, but ignore those and it links directly to Cura. So the latest version of Cura automatically linked to Tinkercad. Uh, the previous version didn't. So if I open this, click open. Now it's going to open on another screen. Uh, I'll move it over when it's running. Right, there it is. Now, Let's just zoom in a little bit. This is your slicing software. So you've got all these parameters here you need to set up. Uh, layer height, I leave. Top, bottom, infill, I don't really touch that. Uh, printing temperature, this is the nozzle temperature. I usually go at 205 because it works for me. The bed temperature I normally put at 65. And then you've got build plate, where it says here build plate. I normally go with brim or raft. That's normally what I use, one of those two. Okay, so this slicing software is all now ready for you to um, load it into your 3D printer. Now if I click slice, now getting the file ready. Now if you look it's going to take four hours 36 minutes. It's not far off normally but there's you change the speed the print speed you can change all that but um, I always say longer the better for, for better quality. So it says here save to disk. Now what I tend to do when I click save to disk click save to disk and you might have an SD card. Now I use a if I can show you um, the intro, that's my Ender 3 Pro. And um, basically, I load the program onto a micro SD card. If you've got an Ender 3, there's a micro SD card slot. You simply push the card in, go through the menu, and go to print and, and let it run. But this is what I used anyway. It's very basic, um, but again, I recommend you download these two files. So it's Tinkercad and um, Cura, and I'll put the links in. Anyway, thanks for watching this channel. Hope to see you next time. Please like uh, and uh, subscribe, and uh, I will see you again soon.